During COVID, I've been spending a lot of time playing Dungeons and Dragons with some friends. Uh, and one of these things that comes up when you're playing Dungeons and Dragons are these traps. And a trap is a thing that you can fall into as a character and you get stuck, you get hurt, you get injured. Uh, and I've also been thinking about how traps come up in carbon removal and in business and in life. Obviously there's, there's things like spending too long on a project or too short on a project. Those can be traps, but I want to highlight the traps that I've seen in carbon removal specifically. Uh, now, as a little bit of a preview, traps are things that I think they're, they're easier to see when somebody else falls into a trap. Uh, I'm certain that I fall into my own traps, and sometimes I can, I can catch those, but I wanted to share just what those traps are so you can be on the lookout for the doom trap, the newbie trap, the superior trap, and the gigaton thinking trap. So I'm going to walk you through what each one of those are. So the doom trap. Some people are attracted to work on the changing climate because of this idea that the world is doomed. And it can be a trap because if you just start looking for doom, it can, it can be easy to get stuck there. If you're looking for proof that the world sucks or proof that the world will continue and always to suck, then that's... That's a trap, and, and that's kind of what I've called the, the doom trap. It's kind of easy to see it in other people, but what it looks like is you get stuck not looking for solutions, but looking for failures. You're actually going to be one of the last people to get on board with a solution because what you're really looking for is doom. And actually, solutions will, will end that doom. Of course, if you're like, hey, the, you know, the planet needs help and I'm going to help, that's terrific. But the doom trap specifically is about getting stuck always looking for the doom, looking for the political disaster, or looking for the funding disaster, or the technology disaster. I think a good test of the doom trap was people's reactions to 45Q during the Trump administration. If you saw 45Q as like, oh my gosh, they are writing checks for carbon removal? Hell yeah. Then I think that was, you know, you're, you're probably less at risk for the doom trap. But if you, were, if you saw 45Q and you said, oh my gosh, just another blah, blah, blah. I think there's a, there's a risk for falling into the doom trap where you just, even good things or even things that seem positive start to actually just seem like more proof that the world is doomed. Be on the lookout for the doom trap, being an expert in what can go wrong. So that's a good segue to the next trap, which is the newbie trap. This is when people start thinking they don't know enough and therefore they can't contribute or they can't start on a solution. There's certainly a base level of knowledge that you need to know and you'll be able to talk with people about. It reminds me of this Peter Thiel quote I found that I really like that relates to the newbie trap. And he said, it can sometimes seem as if one must learn everything old before one can try anything new. But that is not the case. There is a level of knowledge that you need, but I, I see people get stuck thinking that they just continually need to understand every single thing before they can say something, before they have something to add. Uh, and if that's you, it, it doesn't have to be you, right? Like maybe you actually do need to know more. But just to know that that's a, that is a trap, and I, I see people falling into that trap. If you find yourself stuck on the sidelines, uh, and that can be kind of an excuse to just keep learning more, but you actually have a lot to contribute, even if it's just talking to people that are a few steps behind you. Next up is the superior trap. And what I see this all the time in carbon removal, it has to do with thinking that natural solutions are better than technological solutions, or technological solutions are better than natural ones. The more I see people fall into this trap, the more I, I kind of realize that, that nature and technology, these words don't seem to really mean anything. How do, you, how do you measure nature? How do you measure technology? How natural is a solution? How technological is a solution? And it can be a trap because you risk cutting out solutions. Solutions are solutions. What matters is, do they work or not work? And let's let work be better than not working. Let's let faster be better than slower. Let's let bigger be better than smaller. Let's let economical be better than not economical. So that's the superior trap, thinking that technology or nature are these words that you can use to differentiate solutions. Now I mentioned in the superior trap, let bigger be better than smaller, but that's not always the case. And, and actually that can be a trap too. This brings me to the last of the traps, and, and one of the greatest ones. It is called the gigaton thinking trap, and gigaton thinking is something coined by 
uh, Matt Lucas. He has a great blog post. The gigaton thinking trap is this trap where because your solution or your idea for a solution doesn't hit gigaton scale or, or actually really it doesn't solve the change in climate all by itself, oh my gosh, it doesn't, your, your solution doesn't solve everything to do with the change in climate? How could you? That's the type of thinking that I see, I see founders, I see inventors get stuck in. Um, and it's easy to get stuck there because it's like, well, look, if this doesn't solve the whole problem, then, then why am I doing this? But the reality is you need to start somewhere and you need to get going. The converse that I can say is I don't actually see people getting stuck thinking too small. And that's why I think makes the gigaton trap all the more dangerous. If people start small, what I've seen is they inevitably just sort of grow their plan, they bring in more people, they bring in more ideas, they bring in more solutions. But when people start at that high end, I, I often see people disappear for six months or a year uh, in this kind of gigaton trap. And so it's something to be on the lookout for. And again, as with all these traps, just because you're digging in deeper on something doesn't mean that you're in this trap, but just something to, to consider. Okay, so those are the five traps. Why am I talking about these traps, right? Fundamentally, I see dozens of different entrepreneurs getting started in this space. I see hundreds of companies in existence. And in order for us to get to a level where we're making a, a meaningful impact on the climate, you know, I just rather people didn't go through these same traps all the time. And for us to get to a meaningful impact in terms of pulling carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, I'd rather you didn't get stuck in these traps. Or I'd rather if you saw somebody getting stuck in one, you could kind of nudge them and say, hey, get a ton thinking trap. And, and that we would get there faster together. So that's why I'm highlighting these, these traps. This isn't like some encyclopedic research thing where I've gone through and like analyzed the hundred traps. And maybe somebody else wants to do that. But these are the ones that came to mind. These are things that I see over and over and over again in the carbon removal community. And I'd love to hear from you. What traps are you in? What traps have you struggled with? What traps do you see other people falling in? Let me know in the comments.